For all of you guys who don't know me, my name is Sid Chabria and uh, I'm currently a junior studying finance and economics and I'm running for the position of SA treasurer under the Spirit Party. And um, basically, I am an international student. I've been involved with UB for three years. I've come here as a college student. And being an international student was actually hard to get out there and make a difference and actually get involved uh, with a lot of things. And I can make a presence for a while and make a college career with a lot of things. So doing that, overcoming that barrier, uh, makes me stand today in front of you guys over here. Uh, with that being said, I've been involved with um, various different clubs on campus, and I'm currently the treasurer of the Indian Student Association, one of the largest clubs on campus. And I've successfully held events such as Mukaba Indian Act, along with my e-board, and I think uh, we've done a really good job today and uh, this year. And um, I was just really proud. It was a really proud feeling being a part of that e-board. With that being in mind, I also am uh, an active member of the, of, the, of the International Professional Fraternity of Delta Sigma Pi. Uh, and I've been actively involved, as I said, with the recruiting committee, the fundraising committee, and the professional committee. And also have been involved uh, with SA uh, as a bookkeeper since the past two years. So these are basically my qualifications, which I bring to the plate. And uh, basically, that's why I stand today in front of you guys over here to gain your confidence in me because of my, to put my skills and knowledge that I've learned over the past three years to the best ability, uh, which in my opinion is obviously helping the clubs and all the students over here. Um, so if elected treasurer, what can I bring forward? What are my ideas? Uh, would be basically, as my president said earlier, uh, we, have, we are running on three grounds of t uh, transparency, inclusiveness, and efficiency. I'm going to focus on the efficiency part because in my um, opinion, finance and um, the finance department of the SA and money basically needs to be eff efficient so that you guys know where your 9475 is spent and how it is spent. So um, the first thing that I would like to do is clubs actually, I don't know, uh, need a lot of more options. Clubs are restricted to having preferred vendors. Uh, it doesn't charge the SA even a single dollar to actually go out there and increase the number of preferred vendors. By increasing the number of preferred vendors, we just give them more option and variety to pick where they want to get their stuff from so that they're using their money efficiently and because one place might give them a better price than the other place. Um, so it's that little effort which I and my ticket is willing to take so that to make the clubs and the UB students and the UB community's life easier over here. Um, I also want to add on to that with a hiring committee. Um, a hiring committee is, an, uh, is a committee which will uh, not only involve an unbiased opinion with people who have been involved with the SA for over the past five years, such as the pro staff, but also the one member from the Senate and other uh, bodies which uh, have an in influential decision on the UB community. Basically what the intention of the hiring committee is, giving everyone an option of what I did. I uh, actually went out there and got the ability to work with the SA and understood how the SA works. So with the hiring committee, we won't have friends of friends of friends coming in and working for the SA. We'll have actual people working for the SA who are qualified and who believe, uh, and because it's going to be an unbiased opinion, because it's not only coming from the students, it's also becoming the pro staff's decision as well. Basically, the people hired will be based on all their qualifications. And with that in mind, I think the SA as a whole will run more efficiently and smoothly. And all the promises that every party or every person is making over here today can be met. SA finances. People in the past have given a lot of promises and a lot of, said a lot of various things which sound nice but have not been successfully completed or have completed halfway and then have been forgotten about. In my opinion having small goals and having, having getting, them, getting them done to the fullest will prove to be more beneficial than having bigger goals because small things that, such as increasing the amount of preferred vendors go a long way and it's just that little extra effort. So having small goals which are attainable will have a lasting impact not only on the clubs but also the students over here at the University of Buffalo. The emergencies line is one thing which I want to talk about as well. Uh, it's a new thing what me and the Spirit Party have brainstormed and I think it will be a really effective idea for all the students out there, especially the students in the clubs. So one, if a club has a budget say about of $8,000 and they have a really big event, they have a banquet or something of that sort and they have to rent out this place, they have to get the food organized, every, everything, excuse me. And the, the entire budget of $8,000 goes into that. And they have to wait for the ticket sales revenue because obviously they sold money um, by selling tickets to the students who attended the banquet. 
So for the ticket sales revenue to come into their account, it actually goes through um, sub board, it goes through Senate, and a after like maybe two or three weeks, it comes into their account. Because uh, depending on when the event is, the Senate meets, and when the Senate meets, it, it's that time conflict. So in that time, the club cannot do anything. It cannot run because they don't have enough funds in their account. So that's where the emergencies line comes into play. Emergencies line is such a line, it's like a borrowing line. So if a club doesn't have enough funds, but is sure of getting funds in the near future, and it'll be a decision with me and my e-board, which we'll make whether a uh, certain in uh, incident is an emergency or not. So they can actually borrow money from the emergencies line, and they can replenish re the emergencies line once they get the funds into their account, from their ticket sales revenue or fundraising or whatever they had in mind before coming and asking money for from the emergencies line. So just with that, the clubs can run smoothly and if, like continuously and don't have to stop for like three weeks because they don't have funds. It's your money, you should be allowed to utilize it when you, when, when you want it, when you want to have your events. Um, 30 seconds. All right, really quick, purchase order time from turnover for, from five to two days. I don't know uh, how many of you guys over here know about this, but POS take five days to actually, five, three to five days to roll over into an account, uh, in, roll over so that you get approved to use your own money. Uh, I want to change this to just two days. How will I do this is again just by putting the effort. As uh, I want to make the VP included uh, who has access to safe and also I want to include uh, having collaborative office hours with me, the head of uh, the finance department, the, uh, Stephen, and also the VP so that we have collaborative hours and at the end of the day we don't have stocks of paper lined up and we just sign off of everything so that we are not held accountable saying that we are not doing our job efficiently. And I just believe that if I do my job efficiently, your lives will be easier. And in turn, my life and all our lives in the SA will be easier. So, vote for spirit and thank you guys. All right, so I'll ask the first question. Yep. The most interesting part of the debate the other night was when you and Josh started arguing over your role with SA the past mm -hmm. two years. Can you clarify that situation? So. Absolutely. So, um, in the last, in the first year, the sophomore year that I worked with the SA, uh, there were some personal issues with my co-workers and I just thought that there was not a level of professionalism maintained within the SA finances uh, to which I was, when I brought it up to the e-board, there was no solutions, uh, there were no results. So I was just like being forced to work with it and I just feel like if you're working somewhere you should do it when you like it and you shouldn't be like grounded down because you have to and you don't like the environment, you don't like the people you're working with. So because of the sense of professionalism that was maintained in the finance department at that point in time, I resigned my position as bookkeeper. And also uh, this semester, uh, due to um, reasons outside which I don't know about, uh, I was just called in after the winter break that we had, uh, as soon as the day I got back from home. And they called me, the chief of staff called me into the office and he was like, there are a lot of complaints against you. This is verbatim. This is, uh, there are a lot of complaints against you and you are being laid off. And I respected his opinion, I respected the e-board's opinion, and I obviously did ask for clarification and justification at that point of time, but he had no paperwork, nothing prepared to back himself up, uh, which I feel is required. If I was involved with the essay, and if I rely, if I give so much to the essay, I feel that I at least deserve, an op uh, at least it deserve the time, the, the paperwork which they had, which when a complaint is given against me, so that I'm aware of what people don't like about me, so that I can improvise on myself and improve myself. With not having any paperwork, obviously I'm gonna believe that I'm doing a good job and I'm gonna continue working the way I am. And also in the essay handbooks, it was clearly mentioned that they have to be given three administrative warnings before laying off any person. So just looking at that, we obviously know that they weren't following their own rules. And then again, bringing about the sense of professionalism, if you have something written down, you should abide by them. And that's again one more thing which I want to bring about on the plate if elected as treasurer. Uh, the sense of professionalism maintained within the SA department, not only the finances, the entire SA department will be an influential one and will be an effective one. There's not going to be rowdy noises, loud noises when a person walks into the SA office so that people don't have a different opinion about the SA than what it should be. What is your weakest point? My weakest point right now is having, okay, so when I stand over here in front of you, I believe that everything has to be done like this, everything has to be perfect. So just with that idea of being a perfectionist, like I have like giving everything to one thing when I'm dedicated towards it is one of my things. Um, so I would wanna like 
complete one thing and then go on to the next. But I just want to improvise on. I feel that uh, there's always scope for improvement and obviously I want to, like being a best listener will help me in this situation. And if anyone has anything against me or anything which I'm not, which anyone feels that I'm not doing correctly, <coughs> come and tell me. I will not even, what, no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, I'll take out that time to listen so that I can improve upon myself and help the betterment of the university. Yeah. I just have a question. You said that you had resigned because of an unprofessional environment. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a point you, you planned on maybe working out the problem instead of just resigning? No, absolutely. That's okay. what I said. I went in and spoke to the officials. I told them, like, this is what is happening. And I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not happy with it. Can you give me an explanation of why it's happening in the first place? And if you don't have an explanation, try to resolve it. But as I said, there was nothing being done. There were no concrete results or there was nothing... There's no change in the atmosphere that I had when the SA environment. I was a simple student. I, that was my first job ever. I've never worked anywhere before, and the SA was my first job ever. So I didn't know, first of all, what to expect. But when I saw what was I getting, I just felt that it's going to be different in the real world out there, and different jobs will have different perspectives towards what sense of what sense of professional they have to maintain. And if I didn't see the results, that's why I thought that that's exactly why I resigned. And obviously, I did bring it up to the officials, saying that. Uh, this is the situation, and can you help me out with it? But there was no results. For the past two years, for whatever reason, it seems like the treasurer and like the city board never really clicked. Mm -hmm. um, what if we were to get elected? What would you do to remedy that situation? That's a really good question because I believe communication is the strongest point in the essay department. And if there, if we improve upon communication, if we don't have the clicks, if we don't have the little groups formed within the essay, and everyone is like just a family, just a little big team, um, it'll really improve all our three points, transparency, inclusiveness, and efficiency. How I'm gonna do that is improve, if say, who was elected as e-board? Even like, those three candidates are, yes, they're important, but also the uh, entire staff is important. Uh, the orientation that we have, the SA orientation, where we go on for like, I think a couple of days, and we meet. Instead of having like, various activities and stuff like that, I would wanna have like, more one-on-one -on -one personal activities, like having, uh, more so that I know who I'm working with so that if elected I know who uh, how people work and so that I can base my solutions and my decisions and my interpretations of uh, situations later on based on what I thought uh, how they would work so just having that mutual collaboration between the e-board will bring about good communication within the SA finance and I'm such an outgoing person I feel like having that friendliness friendly attitude having an open mind and being a good listener will definitely help at least allow me to do my part in this, my role in this thing, or in this uh, collaboration that we need to have it w between the entire e-board. Sorry, and then Sam. Uh, you mentioned the emergency line. I just mm -hmm. have a couple questions on that. Yep. Uh, where is that money going to come from? And then is that your, or will you only award clubs money if they already have money in SBI waiting to come back to them, or will it be a word of mouth kind of thing? Okay. So first, I would like to answer your first question. Uh, where would the money come from? This emergency sign will be an approximate of $25,000, which I feel basically by trimming the fat with, between the several lines that are within the ESA, not the club's lines, but also the various lines, such as the President's <coughs> Project, uh, there is the commuter's line and stuff like that, where money is just lying there and it's not being utilized to the fullest. I'm not saying to like completely take out the lines. I'm just saying like just to trim the fat to keep it how much it requires and collecting that money and putting it to better use but in the emergencies line. So that's where the money in the emergencies line will come from. The second question, obviously, like if I'm elected, I would want to back anything that I say up. So if I'm allowing any any club to use the emergencies line, I'm going to make it sure. I'm going to look at the past year's records. If they're having that event in several years, I will look how, how much funds they usually raise. And I'll obviously talk to the SBI ticket office, seeing how much money they've actually sold or how much money they have actually in the SBI office through ticket sales and various other resources before I permit them to actually use the emergency design so that it is sure that they can replenish the emergency design which will be available to the next club that wants to use it. Um, you said you wanted to reform the hiring, uh, the hiring committee. Mm -hmm. What specifically are you looking to do to avoid that conflict of interest? Uh, I'm said, sorry, I didn't really... You said you want to reform the hiring right. committee to avoid a conflict of interest mm -hmm. among your staff. What, what right. specifically are you looking to do to solve that? Basically, that's what I said. Having an unbiased opinion is not right based on any of the SAE boards or any anyone in general. Like having a, a biased opinion with anybody, oh, you're my friend, come work for the SA. I don't want to have that attitude within the SA office. I want to have credible people who are 
<coughs> good at their job so that SA can run more effectively and that's one thing which I want to improve upon. And if obviously we're coming from the students, there is going to be some potential, but trying to eliminate that, that potential with having people who are not students, such as the pro staff, as I mentioned earlier, will actually be really influential uh, in making an unbiased decision collaboratively. You said something that I thought was really interesting in the debate the other night. You said, in a simple game of Jeopardy, I would overpower you. Why did you say that? What did you mean by it? Just because I feel like my competitor, Josh, um, he yes, he has worked for the SA. He has good knowledge. He has good skills. He's a great person. But his knowledge is limited only to the SA. I come from within the clubs. I understand what clubs go through. I know all the discrepancies and all the problems that clubs go through when they are like hassling to deal with SA finances and if I resolve them before they even come on and before the before the year even starts I think it'll be the smooth running and a good communication between clubs so having that in mind have me coming from the clubs me having private sector knowledge with the internship that I had this past summer uh, with first investors just bringing all these skills and knowledge in one ground will actually having more skills and knowledge that's exactly where I came to the conclusion of having the Jeopardy game it was just um, a command uh, basically made at that point of time where I feel that having all these knowledge, all these skills and having more energy and more willingness to do more will actually bring more to the plate than just having limited knowledge of the essay. Um, over the past couple of years, the general ledger has been pretty awful to read mm -hmm. for on the essay website. How do you plan on improving that for a like, simple student to read? It'll be... I definitely agree with that. I don't think a lot of, like, even e-board members say, come into the SA office when I used to work for the SA, oh, can I see uh, how much money I have in my account? I always, like, I'm, I'm shocked that you heard that because it is available to you at home. You don't need to come anywhere. You can check it over your phone. And when I, when I uh, currently I'm the uh, treasurer of the Indian Student Association, I, sh I always keep track of my money, of uh, the Indian Student Association's money. So with that being in mind, having a really clear, distinct general ledger, which is readable and comprehensible, on our website, which we are obviously bringing about, will be an addition and will allow students, not only e-board members, will allow students to even view of how their 9475 is being utilized and where each dollar of their money is being spent. And they can like track everything that the SA has done. Let it be even the SA staff, let it be coffee cups in the SA department, or let it be water, let it be anything. They can track each and every dollar of their 9475 having a more comprehensible general ledger. And I think that is really effective for having more efficiency and more transparency, basically. We have time for one more last question. Anybody? Sam? Um, what is the Senate's role in allocating money for the emergency line? The Senate's role, as I said, I always want to back things up. I want to have a good grounds. It is a really, I feel <coughs> in my opinion, it's a really established, well, it's a really, it's just in an initial phase, basically. And if elected, I want to work over it over the summer. I'll obviously be in constant communication. We will obviously won't be face to face, but through emails via various uh, communications. I want to talk to all the members of the Senate who are currently on the Senate, gain their approval uh, to actually have the establishment of the emergencies line as soon as we come into the year. So that'll be one of the projects which I'll be working over the summer and will be available as soon as the school starts. And I feel that'll be a good thing. Having the Senate approval, as I said, I want to back things up to everyone who, who will have an impact on anything with the SA. Let it be the SBI, let it be Senate, let it be any part of the university, I will communicate with them so that I want to hear their opinion about it. And basically, if they have a good opinion, which if which which is really possible, that's why I want to be a good listener. I want to hear their viewpoints over this emergencies line. And if they have a good opinion about it and they want to bring about certain changes, I could do that before actually putting it out there. And I could hear their views about it. Thanks, sir. All right, Appreciate thank you, guys.